Why, hello there, friends. It's Sandy Alnock. I am going to be working on a wash and ink piece today. Not every step in it, because it took me quite a couple of days to do this. And at the very end of this video, I will be sharing with you a new wash and ink course. And I actually did this piece in preparation for doing that because I hadn't had my pens out in a long time. And a couple of them had gotten gummed up and needed some cleaning. So I was able to uh, work through some kinks in my pen and ink land brain because I haven't done any in so long. But, you know, Inktober's coming. So I knew I was going to need to do that as well as a holiday wash and ink course has been kind of cooking in the back of my mind for quite some time. So we're going to do this drawing and then we'll get to the new class at the end of it. So let's get started. So for those who have been around here a while, what do you think of my new intro? Do you miss the old one? I was just thinking I needed something new, so decided to try that. Anyway, I got my sketch done from a photo over at PMP, and it's this beautiful leopard just laying in the shade, hanging out. Uh, today, the word of the day for our challenge is actually shade. So I thought I'd do that. There's going to be more shade added to this dude, but I'm using a mixture of some new gamboge. There's a bit of, I don't know, it's one of my reds. I don't remember which one, a bit of moon glow, just a bunch of colors in here to create some under color, some under painting for the leopard itself. And then I'm going to paint some very loose, 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 goosey loose watercolor with moon glow, burnt sienna for the tree branches. And I'm changing from the photograph. I'll put a link to the photo down below and also post it over on my blog if you want to see the painting and the uh, photo together. Uh, changing some of the branches, just the locations of them because, you know, it covered up his body too much. So I loosened that up. Uh, moved some branches over, made some different ones behind him. And literally, since I didn't have them all sketched in, as you see, I was making it up as I went along just to see what I wanted. The whole thing that had attracted me to the photo was the fact that it had this dark kind of tangled mess around him. And then the whole sky down below was so bright and light and wanted to get that contrast going between the two. And I thought wash and ink would be a good thing to do. So a lot of people will do the drawing first and then they'll, they'll dive into adding color to it. I find this helps me to get my drawing a little bit more like my vision. Because if I started doing the drawing, I was gonna sit there and draw every one of those stinking tree branches in the place that it was in in the photograph. Because, you know, I get my mind wrapped around those small details. Here, I just kind of threw stuff in there. I started just throwing in leaves all over the place and then I can go in with the pen and refine what I decide to do. And I can always add more color and stuff. So I left a lot more openings than I was going to need when I painted all of this. So lots more openings in the leaves and stuff. Ironically, my favorite part was drawing the wood. I love drawing any kind of tree trunks, wood, anything like that. I probably need to do this a few more times to get it out of my system or something. I don't know. But I love this kind of detail. It's doodling, but it's kind of doodling with creating something at the same time. Because I'm looking at the photo. I'm trying to get the character of what the wood is doing. You know, there's little knotty shapes. There's holes in it. There's pock marks in it. There's some areas that are just like that, that big knob hanging out at the front. There's smooth sections of it too. There's all different kinds of things. So you have lots of opportunities to create really unique, different kinds of lines. And since I needed to practice my whole pen and ink brain and get back into it, I've been doing so many other things for so long 
got sucked into so much wonderful watercolor this summer during World Watercolor Month. And then with the partnership with the alcohol marker people at Olo, doing a lot more alcohol marker work for a little while. And now we're working toward in an ink season with Inktober coming. There's just something to the rhythm of the art year that I love having other things that can guide me too. Uh, you know, sometimes I make my own choices about what I want to to draw and what medium I want to use, but I kind of enjoy the fact that those group things that the community does together are also things that can help me to not have to think so hard. And this is one of the uh, first things done since my mom's passing. Um, been using a lot of my previous videos that I had in the can from over the summer because I just did a whole bunch of extra things this summer. It's why I wasn't available for a whole lot of other things because I knew that the time was coming that we were going to lose her and I wanted to have some stuff at least in the can that I could just upload and schedule and take a couple weeks off for me. And uh, that, that time has passed now. So I'm back to making things. And the, the new class um, that I'll be showing you in a few minutes is one of those things that I had gotten ready earlier. I kind of knew I was gonna do this one. Um, haven't done any, you know, I guess I did do a little bit of Christmas classes last year. I did the favorite things classes, but I haven't done any real card maker type of wash and ink classes um, intended specifically for cards. And I thought doing something for holiday cards might be something you guys would like. So that is what, uh, what I wanted to do, but I hadn't done any <laughs> pen work. And when I got my pens out, I think they had just sat for too long. So I ended up having to go to YouTube and find out how do I take the nib out again? How do I do that? Because usually I rotate between pen and ink and other things so often that my pens don't just sit there unused for months on end. So there are plenty of videos out there. Just go look for them. Uh, it's easy to take the nib out and, you know, just carefully wash it. You can take out the back of the, the um, Twisby Eco. If you've saved your little wrench thing when they send you one, don't get rid of it. Um, cause you can take that apart. You can clean it. You can put a little drop of oil in it. You know, lots of things that you can do to tidy your pens up and get yourself ready for Inktober. If that is something that you jam on. And th I'm talking about the Twisby Eco pens. They're my favorites to use. Other pens have different, you know, well, you can Google for them, but anyway, back to the drawing. Um, had just way more fun than a barrel of monkeys with that first part of the tree branch, but it was interrupted by the leopard's leg and tail. So I decided to move on to those and, you know, really looking at the shapes of them. I didn't have them all drawn in. So I was just looking at the photo to get the general gist of the shapes. And once I, I put the first parts of the legs in, I wanted to get the the underside of what the leopard was sitting on so that I could define that body because it was just like not not coming together with just the amorphous shape up there. So that's why I drew the legs in there. Uh, decided that I didn't have enough color in it. So after I had already put the pen and ink in, I added more watercolor to it. And that's one of the great things about using a waterproof ink like the one that I do. I use uh, platinum carbon black ink and it's waterproof so you can do all kinds of things to it and you know add more watercolor on top if you need which is helpful now here's where my looseness really comes into play because even though i didn't draw a branch in here for some of these these leaves i had used my needle brush to just make crazy leaf shapes and that is guiding me so that I'm not sitting there looking at, okay, there's a leaf here and there's a leaf there and this one goes in front of that one. Instead, I am just making leaf shapes that came off my brush. Those are my leaves. That's, that's my leaf instead of trying to replicate exactly what's there. Just like that tree branch that I was doing all that doodling on, that's my doodling. That's not trying to replicate that branch from the photo. 
And I'm going to be talking in my next video about one of the reasons why I am, you know, making more of an effort and, and I'm loving more doing my own thing with a, a reference when I'm using a reference for something or combining multiple references because I'm trying to do more work that's unique, unique to me because, you know, we all got to figure out who we are as an artist. And as long as all we're aiming for is replicating something exactly, that's when, I don't know, that's when we lose sight of becoming the artist that we were meant to be. So I'll talk about that a lot more in the next video. And some of you have already begun to comment on the, <laughs> the premiere of that. So there's some opinions coming, I think, from all of us. Anyway, you can see the tangle of leaves that I built here. And I just created more and more leaves, pushing some to the back by darkening them and leaving others in the foreground. And on this rough watercolor paper, I can use less pressure to get a lighter line across my leaves. And that, you know, some of these lighter leaves, they have pen and ink on them. They just don't have as much as the ones behind them. And then heavier pressure with the pen will put down more ink and darken the leaves in the back. So I wanted that push-pull and I wanted all that cacophony of detail. So I have some places where you can see a branch that, you know, branches out into a couple of leaves. And then there are other places where it just kind of morphs together. And I just enjoyed that whole process of trying to figure out how to get all those, those leaves to look interesting and yet look like a jumbled mess so that nobody would get lost looking in them. And that's when I decided to just take some moon glow and add some onto all of that green. Because when I looked at the entire painting, the whole thing is in deep shadow. Like those leaves are, feel like they're practically black because you know, you're looking up at the, the, the sky behind it. So you get that contrast of, you know, being blinded by the, the brightness of the sky. So I needed that to be a little darker, but I didn't want to lose the detail I could get in the pen and ink. So the moon glow desaturated it and darkened it at the same time, which I think really helped it. And I could just do in a controlled fashion, a few of those strokes of the moon glow to, to do that to the entire thing at once real quickly once I had all that pen and ink work done. So there's basically nothing in this entire drawing that doesn't have watercolor under it or, um, or I shouldn't say or, but and pen and ink on top of it. So here you get a better look at how much line work is still in those leaves. And then it came to the rewarding part. Uh, always doing the uh, the face of an animal is like the, the part where you find out whether or not it was worth everything else you did because it looks like what you wanted it to look like. <laughs> I know a lot of us will start with the animal's face and I was just trusting that I was going to be able to get this right in the pen and ink. I had only drawn in in pencil you know, the eyes and the nose and the outside of the shape. I did not draw the rest in. So I was trusting myself with the pen to get everything else right. Now, if you want to have more of that drawn in, then just don't erase your pencil lines or draw more of them in. But I really wanted to push myself as I was get, getting back into doing more pen and ink. And I looked at the photograph to really see the shapes that were on each of the areas. Now there's some places on a leopard where it's just blob next to blob. Sometimes they're more rounded, sometimes they're more close together, and sometimes they're further apart. There's all different kinds of different ones based on what you're looking at. When the animal's leg turns one way or the other, the spots also turn with it. Like that's what shows you what the turn is, even though it's just, you know, little spots on a blob of open area. So that's where looking really carefully for what your, what your goal is, what your, your, um, your reference is really is helpful. But I'm looking at that only enough to get the muscles of the body defined by the spots. I'm not trying to make every spot in the exact place that it belongs. Now I had painted 
with the moon glow, this shadow. And, you know, I was trying to add some of that when I painted in the first place, in that first wash. I added some of that to give myself guidelines. That's a way of sketching without sketching, is to just drop those shadow colors in so that then when it came to putting all the spots on, I've got that for my general idea of what I need to do without actually sketching out every single bit or trying to draw all the muscles in from the get-go. And this is a relatively large drawing of it. I could have drawn in a lot more, but it just seemed like the better part of Valor was to push myself to just be able to make these spots. Now there's some places on this leopard and on all leopards where they have several spots that join together and they have like a blob of dark brown in between three spots. So they almost look like they're open holes that it may be, you know, sometimes they may look like a circle, but a lot of times they're just more like a, a U shape in one direction or another. And there's some parts on the body that I saw that more. Now, some of that could be the angle that you're looking at it. Um, and some of it might just be, that's the kind of spots that show up on that particular animal in that area. Um, there were, you know, lines I could see where certain of the groups of spots ended up actually forming those muscles by being at a certain angle. And that's what really what I was trying to achieve in a lot of this. So again, going back in with more paint here, I wanted my leopard to just have a little bit more definition now that I had an idea of where how much the pen and ink had achieved and whether or not I needed to go in with more. I wanted more of the shadow color as well as more of the brighter yellowish color so that um, I, could, I could have the intensity and the brightness of the leopard, but also those deep dark shadows that really indicated he's in the shadow. He's inside that tree and looking for shade. And there's just a few spots, a um, few areas that are out in the sunshine. And then also most animals have a whiter underbelly. Long reasons as to why. Maybe I'll do a video on that sometime. But um, the underside of him is going to have more white in it anyway. So more of the color is going to be on the top. And then adding the those darker shadows is good. So little last bit uh, is to add in a sparkle in the eyes because you've got to have the glint in the eye of a leopard who's looking at you, right? There is no such thing as a leopard who's not going to be staring at you uh, ready for a meal. He's looking at you from up in a tree. Put in a couple whiskers as well. And I had added some green leaves underneath that chin uh, that hadn't been there before because I wanted to make sure the chin showed up. So you can see all that delicious color underneath, just very loose color along with uh, crazy kind of doodling. And yet when you step back from this, it looks highly detailed. Uh, it you know, just looks like far more realistic than you would get if you just looked at this up close. And I recommend always looking at your work from a distance because it's going to look a lot better than it does when your nose is pressed right up against it, as I always tell you. So let's talk a little bit real quickly about the wash and ink course. As I said, it's uh, appropriate for those who like to make greeting cards, especially, but you could also make them larger than these and turn them into, you know, bigger paintings and hang them on your wall and that sort of thing. So I did a lot of really loose stuff. Um, we're using masking fluid. So Yay for that. Uh, I did not include gouache on the list because I'm assuming we are going to rock the masking fluid. So you can have some gouache handy if you really need it, but we're doing all of that stuff with masking fluid. And the cards are going to be posted on my blog because they are not done yet at the time I am recording this, but there's five lovely paintings. I think the Cardinal's my favorite. And that class is currently available, just fresh, hot off the presses if you are interested in it. So let me th know what you thought of my leopard and what you thought of my new intro to this video and if you're going to take the class. And I'll see you on Saturday with a maybe controversial video, all right? I'll see you then.